What's going on, everybody? You know who it is. This is Austin, and this is the Austin Smith Real Estate Podcast, where we talk about real estate and we talk about lifestyle. Today's guest, two times. Uh, this will be the first two. Well, actually, it's the first time for two things. One, these are my first repeat guests. And two, as you can see, this is the first dual podcast episode where I got two guests on the show. So definitely excited, definitely well worth the listen. Um, we're going to be talking about mindset. We're going to be talking about entrepreneurship. We're going to be talking about being young and wealthy, what it takes, how to build businesses, how to leverage your credit to build businesses, how to invest in real estate. We talk about it all. Um, in promotion of the second tour, the second Young and Wealthy tour, they went to a couple of cities and states the first time and now they're back at it, so they're bringing it straight to you, and this is only a snippet, but they dropped a lot of gems in this podcast episode, so I can only imagine how the actual tour is going to be. A little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please, please, please take the time. Go on to austinsmithrealestate.com slash podcast. Subscribe to the show and be the first one to know as soon as the episodes are released. And that and a, a bunch of other content, uh, videos and everything like that. And if you, and only if you, have received value by listening to the podcast, please Love on the iTunes, leave me a rating and review. Let's continue to share this sugar. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the show. What's going on, everybody? Today on the Austin Smith Real Estate Podcast, uh, we got an awesome episode. Definitely be prepared for this one. Uh, you might want to write notes. You yeah, might want to take the long way to, uh, to work. This is going to be one of those episodes. This is the first duo episode, and it's the first duo returning guest episode. So today's guests, I mean, I'm going to allow them to talk about themselves, their accolades, speak for themselves. We got an individual whose sole mission is to help. Well, I mean, once he hits a thousand, I'm pretty sure he's going to go beyond that. Uh, millennials get their credit right, start their business. We got another individual who's teaching um, young investors how to build a uh, million dollar wholesaling business. I, I don't even want to go into the details. Y'all can go check the previous shows, but I wanted to welcome back to the podcast, Ramel Neurals and Isaac Grace. Fellas, thank you for taking the time to come back onto the show. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, King. Yes, sir. Thank you for having us. We appreciate you. No, absolutely. So just so the, the audience can get an idea of who voices who, um, Isaac, kind of take the lead in starting this off on how you got started. Give us the, the real uh, Cliff Notes version of it, and then we'll move on to Ramel. Gotcha, King Austin. And first and foremost, I just want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to come on your platform and enlighten your listeners and your supporters. So we want to thank you on behalf of me and Ronnell, first and foremost. And, um, you know, the, you know, good good evening to all of our podcast um, listeners. I'm Isaac Grace. I'm 26 years old. I am a real estate investor. I am a uh, motivational speaker and a, as well as a youth, um, a youth mentor. Um, I got into real estate back in 2014. Um, you know, I was just out here, you know, unsure of my future, you know, running the streets. And I came across a YouTube ad, um, you know, three times selling term real estate mogul. Um, you know, I, I, I met Jay Morrison virtually, you know, joined in his Jay Morrison Academy course. I got my first deal done six months. I made over $12,000 on the deal. And that was kind of my introduction into the business world right there beautiful beautiful man and Ramel, talk to us nice nice so just to piggyback off of king isaac definitely i want to thank you as well for allowing us to share this platform so we can continue to educate and millennials um you know my name is Ramel mel also known as the young mogul 
26 years old, business professional, author, credit coach, and entrepreneur. You know, my story is similar to Isaac in a lot of ways. You know, five years ago, I came across a video on YouTube and Team J. Morrison, you know, was immediately intrigued and jumped into his online class where I learned, you know, credit and real estate from A to Z. I took that experience and started to apply it. put my feet on the ground, you know, built my real estate company and I acquired my first brownstone, which was a $1.2 million brownstone at the age of 25. And the success from that allowed me to branch out and, you know, create other streams of income, you know, investing in a commercial cleaning franchise that I own and now um, a nonprofit organization and a credit restoration company. So that's, you know, some of the things that I do, but ultimately my, my passion, my, my vision is to, you know, just be an inspiration for millennials and financially empower them across the world. I, I will say this, you know, I, I, I appreciate the thanks, no doubt, but, you know, it's guests like you that, that make it easy. And, you know, with, with the experience um, and the the goal to give back, it, it makes it a lot easier to do these episodes. So I think, yeah, like I said, you know, for coming back on the show. And it looks like, I mean, it looks like Jay Morrison is like, is is he the Wayne of this? Is, this, if he, is he the Wheezy of this? It seems like he's, like, he's running a little cash, a like ball. a young money, you know what I mean? One of y'all's Drake. Yeah, I mean, I got to give it to Isaac. Isaac's the light-skinned one, so we'll call him Drake. Oh man! <laughs> he gave you the Drake title, bro. <laughs> oh man! But it seems like I he's think, really I pouring think. into you. Yes. Yeah, Jay, Jay is a big homie, man. He was the first image of showing that a black man could be successful outside of the the, the studio or outside of a basketball court, and you know that was just inspiring for us, and it put us in position. And now we're just going to reciprocate that same energy and be motivation and be an inspiration for everybody else coming from the bottom that may not be talented enough to be the fastest on the basketball court or be the best in the, in, in the studio in the booth. Mm, so, right, you know, we right. just keeping that same energy going. Mm. Yeah. The the Young and Wealthy Tour. So this is your the, the second go around, which is awesome because I came out I came out to the first one um, and I had it at a La Rouge Lounge. Um, where I got a chance to to meet you, especially because, you know, Isaac was already on the podcast, I think, and then Ramel, I got you on after. And, um, you know, it was cool to obviously put a, put a face to the name, you know, and a face to the voice. And, you know, I learned a lot while I was there, you know, just off of, you know, the, the credit basics, yes, but, you know, being able to build on that, how to uh, effectively leverage systems to build businesses and even I think it was the ten steps to an effective hustler. It was something like that. But uh, those those points were were you know um, when you're able to implement those things, uh, it it can be game changing on how you run your business. So now this is the this is the second go around. What what what's the goal of this year's tour? Where are you guys going to be at? What's the mission? So. Um, so our mission, you know, um, it pretty much remained the same, but, you know, our mission is really just to, you know, bridge the wealth gap in millennial entrepreneurs through financial literacy and, and self-development. So, you know, last year, um, this was something that, you know, coming from, you know, Big Bro Jay, you know, kind of, you know, put it into my ear to say, yo, listen, King, you you need to be the, the, the man for the millennials from that age range from 17 to you know, 33 and anywhere close to that, you need to be that go-to guy. You need to inspire and give them people hope. And when I, I immediately caught that wisdom and started, you know, manifesting on how can I make this happen, and me and Ramel had just linked up. Me and Ramel had probably met. We probably knew each other for like three or four months already. We had did um, like two or three events. Um, and actually, this is like within like the first two months we met. So when I got the vision, I immediately thought about Ramel, and I think this is really important as young um, millennials out here. To, you know, when you're going for something that's bigger than you, it's okay to take that ride with a, a brother or a sister or someone that's aligned with that vision. So I immediately brought the idea to Ramel, and I was like, listen, I've got this great opportunity, and I don't, I can't see me making this happen without you. So that's kind of, you know, how we teamed up and started the Young and Vocal Tour and pushed it being powered by the Jay Morrison Academy and Jay Morrison brand. Um, and, and, and this year here, you know, our mission is really just to connect it. You know, we're, we've, we've, 
stepped up our businesses since the last tour. We, you know, became more smarter, more sophisticated, opened up more businesses and got a lot more wisdom over that year. And all we're trying to do is take our experiences and what we've learned and bring it to our underserved millennials, our underserved communities, and let them know that it is okay to be financially lit. You know, that that's the new that's the new hot thing now to be financially lit. So that's what we're trying to do. Show show the community, show the tri state and a few other states that I'll let Ronald get into that we'll be going to. Understand that hip hop culture and financial literacy together is super cool. Mm. I like how you mentioned hip hop culture and financial literacy just as a uh um you know the you know the taking the two aspects right because sometimes in hip hop culture it's well and obviously I, you know I would majority of the time uh in hip hop culture uh we see the money coming in right like we have no problem talking about how many people are making the rappers and the artists have no problem talking about how much they made off of a show everything like that but that's just off of the income and then we don't kind of know what happens after that but what we do know is that there are some rappers that and artists and people in the hip hop industry that still have their money and then we obviously heard about the people that gone broke and you know what I'm saying? Like that, that I, I like how you're putting those two pieces together because I think that is the one element uh, that is missing uh, from the hip hop culture, which is why artists like Rick Ross, Hov, Nipsey, obviously RIP, when they start talking about these things, um, you know, really gets the attention because they're using their platforms in a different way and in a different light that people aren't normally used to hearing. Right. Yep. Very true. So where y'all where y'all yeah, going at, Ramel? So we we expanded last year. We did five cities. This year we're expanding to three more cities. We're gonna definitely do the tri-state again. You know, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Philly, New Jersey. Then we're gonna make our way out to Atlanta, Georgia, uh, North Carolina, and, and Chicago. So and that's that's the cities we plan on hitting right now. We working it out. And just you know, we want everybody to be prepared for when we hit our hit their city. Yeah, everybody be on the lookout for that. Um, I mean, I'm definitely going to be blasting it when this episode goes live. Be on the lookout. Um, it's definitely something to attend. And for the for the people that are in Jersey with us, where are you guys going to be at in New Jersey? Newark, New Jersey. Are, are you going back to La Rouge? Uh, probably not. We're probably get a different location. We haven't solidified that yet, but we okay. definitely want to be in the New York area. Okay, no when, doubt. We, when we get that information solidified, we'll have it out. We'll be on the we'll be on the lookout for that. I'll be promoting it. Um, I'll be there. It'll be good to see y'all fellas, and we can get into it. Let's uh let's break down uh some of your own personal perspectives, right? Because you're doing this as a collab, but both of you aren't teaching the same things let's talk you know let's isolate the both of you Ramel we'll start with you on your points for the young and wealthy tour and what you actually bring to the table and what you would like people to know yeah that's a really good question um and I, I'm, I'm glad you that you asked that because you know me and Isaac we are similar in a lot of ways but our past was different. We ended up in the same place doing the same thing. So, you know, King Isaac, he will tell you his story, you know, high school dropout, you know, made his way through the street, but now he's here. And you know, my story is a little different. I'm, I'm actually a college graduate. You know, started out with a corporate career, you know, going that route and seeing that that's not it. You know, just graduate with a degree, you know, working a nine to five, making you know, $50,000 a year, it just wasn't enough for me. So it was about how do I leverage that to build the businesses and the entity that I've built today. So, you know, I, I've been able to do it through learning real estate, you know, understanding how to leverage my credit. And that's why I'm so passionate about credit. And that's what I'm going to bring to the Young and Wealthy Tour. I'm going to bring how you can take your personal credit and leverage it to, you know, build business credit, family credit, you know, all these things that you can get because, you know, a lot of people are screaming that they don't have money and they don't have all the resources to start a business, but it's right here in our laps but it's about having the strategy behind that so that you can execute. So so for me, you know, my biggest mission is to be an example for those individuals that do have that job and they're stuck and they, you know, are trying to figure out a way to get out of that corporate trap. 
you know, yeah, you may have went to college and you have a degree, but you're sitting at home and you don't have a, a, a job in the career that you went to school for. You know, I'm, I really want to be that example for those people that have that and they need a way out. And I'm going to show them that this is how we do it by being that motivation and that inspiration. And you and you run a and you run a couple of businesses. Did did you leverage your credit to fund all of those businesses, or or because I know you had the real estate investment. I believe you have the is uh is like property manager or or a cleaning company. Yeah, so I have um, a real estate company, um, Connection Cleaning Company, Global Credit Institute, which is my credit restoration company, and my nonprofit organization. So. Yes, with all of them, I leverage my credit because the, the rule of the game is to always keep as much cash liquid in your pocket and use other people's money to make more money and bring a, a larger return. And then you're also able to diversify yourself. So the reason why I'm able to have different businesses is because I leverage my credit to diversify and invest in different things. You know, So if I only subject myself to just cash, I may have only been able to just stick to real estate, you know? Mm. So I, I definitely, you know... I think that leveraging your credit, it helps you expand. And that's what I've been able to do, you know, to have all my businesses. That's awesome, man. I, I love it, man. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, point yeah. to, we'll point to you, Isaac. What, what, are, what are your points on being young and wealthy? I mean, obviously, I believe you're the youngest out of all of us. So uh, what, what you got coming to the table? Yes, I appreciate that. And um, just to piggyback off what King Ramel was saying about this is a trap. And, 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 and unintentionally, this relationship that we have is so powerful. And he, and he just hit it. It made me realize that, you know, we've come from two different backgrounds. And we come from similar upbringings, but we took different routes to ultimately be where we are today. And one thing that it's saying to all of our listeners is no matter which route you take, you know, you're in the trap until you master and understand financial literacy. So for me, you know, I kind of break down this young and wealthy tour into three main points that I want to get across to everybody who comes to meet us or see us via live stream. And that's really just on the mindset, self-development, and real estate investing. You know, me coming from, you know, you know, uh, a troubled youth, I was adopted through a nonprofit organization you know, when I was 16 years old, called No Guns, Just Gloves. And it was for at-risk youth, for kids who were, you know, in, in situations that weren't beneficial to their futures. And while I was out here, um, you know, running the streets, I was living with family members and just started living with friends and started, you know, getting into hustling and making money and, and everything that comes with that. I was also a boxer at the time, too. And boxing was kind of my getaway from my reality. So I was able to let go of a lot of my stress and be able to go chase something because, like Rob Mel said, basketball and rap wasn't – it didn't work for me. I got I, – I quit football my junior year of high school, like the second game into it, you know, and I had like a very little, tiny, small rap career when I was about 19. But for me, it didn't make sense to rap about all the things I grew up was doing that would end me up in jail. So I kind of stepped away from that and, you know, um, I kind of fell in love with boxing. And that was one of the first things that um, really brought me, um, that, that kind of saved me. So, you know, coming from all of that adversity, being a high school dropout, allowing this program to help me get back on path. This program got me my GED, you know, helped me get my driver's license. I was a full-time boxer, so the mindset that it, boxing taught me was a whole thing that I'd be giving at the Young and Wealthy Tour and then ultimately gave me a working job and taught me that it was okay to be a working man at that time. You know, our, you know, our upbringing confuses us with the hip hop culture that, you know, I me mean, working ain't foot, working ain't cool. You know what I mean? Like we not, you know, we don't work. We, we make money other ways. So it kind of started shifting my mindset. And, you know, um, and then 2014, I got into real estate. You know, once I got into the business, got my first deal done, I had to self-develop myself. So I jumped into the business, you know, backwards. So I kind of jumped in it because of Jay's message for black people. It wasn't even about real estate for me. It was like, one, I seen that, okay, being a businessman, that, that's still fly. That's the first thing I seen when I met Jay Morrison. It still looked good to be a businessman. It almost was equivalent to being a rapper or a ball player. So I was like, you know what? That's going to be for me right there because, one, no one in my neighborhood is doing it. So I'll... I can stand out and really take this and run with it. But two, you know, 
this is something that can get me everything that I want. And then for legacy building and just for black people, that's what draw me into real estate. I got my first deal done. I found out, okay, I'm actually okay at this. I did my first deal in six months. And then I realized, um, and this is funny because when you finally have your first case of success on Supreme, you realize really how much work you got to go. And over the next two and a half, three years, I self-developed myself. From, from I was a high school dropout. I had to learn how to speak. You know, I had to learn how to write, spell words right. I had to learn how to articulate myself, you know. And being around Rommel coming from a college upbringing, that, that was one of the biggest things that I've seen, how smooth he articulated himself and how professional he, he, he pronounced his words. And I would really pay attention to him when he spoke because it helped me. So, you know, I self-developed myself from all of them things there. And then my last one is the, is the real estate, you know. All the strategies that we'll be talking about on the tour of real estate that have, have helped me make over six figures multiple consecutive years in this business and, and you know, doing great things and, and, and closing checks over $30,000, $40,000 off of all these great strategies we'll be talking about at the Young and Wealthy Tour Part 2. So those are my three, you know, touching points that I want to touch all my millennial souls, you know, over this tour that we'll be starting. And I want to... Um... You know, I, I want to ask, you know, this particular question, because obviously, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to give out all your secrets, but, you know, for someone, and I'll, I'll ask it tailored to both of you, um, Ramel, I'll start with you. For someone who, you know, like, like you said, is at a nine to five, or maybe they're, you know, thinking about, or maybe they are an entrepreneur and they just need to find, you know, more money to, to take it to the next level. Do you recommend that that person immediately go after business credit or do you recommend that they leverage their personal credit uh, instead? Yeah, really good question. So they have to first start off with their personal credit. You know, like building a business as a second entity and, in, 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 you know, the, the banks look at that business as something separate. But before they can look at your business, they want to look at you as an individual. How do you take care of your finances? Are you financially responsible? Are you making your payments on time? Are you making the right decisions? If you can't do that personally, you will pretty much do the same. You, you'll fail at your business. So if you can't, you know, wake up every day and be disciplined and, you know, clean yourself up, brush your teeth every morning, go and make sure that you're healthy. If you're not doing everything to make sure that you're, right as a person, as an individual, how do you think that's going to translate when you're running a business? Because essentially it's the same thing. Your business is like, is your baby. You know, if you don't put that time, that energy, that love into it, it's not going to really flourish. So yes, I would say start with your personal credit. And then from there, you can, you know, use that to leverage it to get business credit. What would, what would, because you're running multiple businesses, um, how, like, how do you, how do you, how do you do it all? Like, how, how do you run you know, you have the same 24 hours as everybody else, but how do you maximize your time to be able to run multiple profitable businesses? It's really about having like leadership. You know, for me, I'm a big, big believer in leadership. Me leading the right way and building a, a team around me that can help run things. So my cleaning company is pretty much automated. Like for me, I, re I have a business manager who manages it, manages it you know, does the payroll, does the scheduling. You know, I'll be with my clients on a monthly basis. But it's pretty much an autopilot where it's running itself. I put the systems in place. So for anybody that's looking to be a multi-business owner, you have to lead the right way so that you can put systems in place to have a team that can keep it running for you. And, and then the second thing is just being disciplined with your time. You know, a lot of times, you know, people will call me and say, hey, I need you to do this, or hey, I need you to do this, but... You have to be confident and say, hey, no, I cannot commit to that because I have this meeting to go to. I have this call to make. I have this appointment. It's really about being disciplined and selfish with, with your time. You cannot commit and go out every single weekend, want to hang out everywhere, and be, be with family and friends, knowing that you have priorities and obligations to your business. And then, you know, the, the last thing would be being organized, making sure that I have my calendar up to date, making sure that I'm planning out my weeks ahead. So on Friday, I'm planning out next week already. So I'm already booked for next week. You know, we, we worked on scheduling this podcast last week. You know, that's what it takes to be a true business 
a professional in most being a professional in most simple things through you know leadership, um, prioritizing your time, and I'm being organized and disciplined. I and love it, and I got it. I, I, you made me just it, yeah, you got me going. All right, so last question: the yeah. when say if I'm a new entrepreneur no matter what i'm selling whether it's real estate whether it's sneakers whether it's you know makeup whatever the case would you recommend right because i understand long term i need to i need to build the people around me would you if this was if this was your situation would you do what you ever you can inside the business to grow it first or would you leverage your credit to then put everybody that you need to in place to begin with? Maybe not everybody, but maybe you might, you know, put like maybe an admin or, you know, somebody to go do marketing or whatever the case. But would you try to do everything yourself in the beginning or would you leverage your credit to then put the proper pieces in place from the start? So you would want to do everything yourself. But at the end of the day, credit is, is a really good thing because you have access to money that you like didn't have previously, but it's still debt at the end of the day. So you want to make the right decisions. You don't want to leverage your credit and then things go less and then you're stuck with that debt. So I would say, you know, jump in full force by yourself. That's what I did. You know, four years ago, it was just me. I was doing all my photos. I was doing all my marketing. I was doing everything for my business. I was, you know, cold calling, doing everything for my deals. You know, finding my own contractors. Everything was pretty much all on me. And, you know, I built my, my knowledge around that. So this is one of the biggest takeaways that I learned from King J on a call that I had with him like maybe like two years back. And he said knowledge plus credibility equals influence. And, and that's how he built a strong brand. And I took that to heart. And I said, yo, I'm going to really apply this and execute it. So you build the knowledge around whatever business that you're going into. How you build your knowledge is by actually doing it, having an experience by failing multiple times is trial and error. So you build that experience up, and then with that experience, you have, you know, with that knowledge and experience, you build credibility. So everybody around you, they start to see you in a different light. And my friends and my family, they started to see me in a different light because I was doing real estate. You know, I was branding myself as a professional before anybody even thought I was a real estate professional. And that's when people start coming around and want to join your team and want to be around you for free. You know, so now I have people that want to be around me because they have influence where they'll go out and do the work for free just because they want to learn. And now I'm able to build a culture around me and start putting money in people's pockets and build, you know, systems so that, you know, I can branch out and do different things. So, um, yeah, and like hopefully that answers your question. No, that, that pretty much had it right on the nose. And, you know, I'm hoping that the listeners can understand that you know, you start off as a you start off as a technician, right? Like in your business, doing everything. Then you move up to a manager. You might have somebody that you know you manage outside of that. And then from there, you know, you scale up. And then you obviously have you put the proper pieces in place as you continue to grow. Because then at some point, you as the CEO, you need to be making other moves throughout your day, other than you know the ten dollar, twenty hour. $40 an hour work, right? Because at that point, you're doing the $1,000, 2000 $5,000 an hour work at the CEO level. So, you know, it, you hit it right on the head. And the cool part about it is that even though, you know, which is interesting how you guys are coming together for this, um, Ramel, even though you're doing, you know, you're doing the credit business, uh, you're doing the commercial cleaning company on the side, um, you're running your philanthropic um, events and, and services and things like that, but you still manage to invest in real estate. So now turning over to Isaac, where we have real estate as, I don't want to say a common denominator when it comes down to, you know, being young and wealthy, but I'm not going to say that it isn't either. So tell us, you know, first off, you're, you're an investor in real estate. Tell us about your particular strategy um, just so people can get a sense of how you invest in real estate. I know Ramel, um, was it, I think Ramel, you're still holding that, that brownstone, right? No, I actually flipped that brownstone. I did, um, fix and flip on that brownstone, but I okay. have some other property that I'm holding. All right. Yeah. Got you. So you, okay. So you flipped it. 
Um, Isaac, obviously, you're you're doing a different strategy as an investor. Kind of give us the play by play on that and um, what's needed to build a, a successful wholesaling business. Gotcha, gotcha. And just you know, real quick, I think Ramel, you know, hit that little series so perfect on the head that you know I don't even think I can you know even top that because he kind of you know we was just kind of thinking on the same page. I think he did a really great job with that. And you know, for me. You know, I kind of, you know, jumped in, obviously. First, you know, just as a real estate professional. Um, now, in real estate, there's so many different ways that you can make money in real estate. So, for me, you know, understanding all the options, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers know a little bit about real estate. You know, you got the buying and hold and the buying and flipping. And I'm sure you guys even heard about wholesaling real estate. You know, that's kind of my niche. That's my my comfort level and my bread and butter when I've been able to build you know, six-figure businesses on consecutive years, you know, doing this strategy here. And the reason why I really chose this strategy was really, really kind of what Ronell just said about doing everything yourself first. So for me, it was just like, okay, I get it. Yeah, I can really doing everything myself would be go buy, hold the property for long term or buy and flip a property and make a quick profit on it. But for me, as a high school dropout, you know, uh, from underserved communities, in uncharted territories with no true mentors or people that I really, you know, felt like would be genuine at this time back in 2004 for me. You know, the whole selling real estate strategy really stuck to me because what you're doing is you're really creating that opportunity. You're making it happen as a real estate wholesaler. You're finding that deal and you're just putting it under contract and then selling your interest out of that great deal for a fee. So I told myself over the last few years, like, okay, well, you know what? Let me do this for some time. You know, let me master this part of it, the art of finding deals and then just learning from my investor that I speak to all the time and some deals that they bought we thought were great deals and they're stuck with. Or and there's a lot of stuff that goes unforeseen within this business where everyone just want to jump in and just, I want to flip. I'm, I'm not doing wholesaling. I'm not doing holding. I want to flip. I want to do this, that, and this. But for me, I'm all about calculated and strategic risk. You know, and I'm not here to lose any money. You know, like, I'm not trying to lose ever lose any money. So for me, the conservative way is really, you know, for me, wholesaling real estate. You know, and I've been able to, you know, through everything I know, just talked about leadership, you know, prioritizing your days and being organized, put together systems, processes, automations, and a team around me of hungry, motivated individuals where I don't no more have to do the day in and day out activities of what it takes to be a successful, have a successful real estate wholesaling business. Do you think, what, what are some of, and uh, this question is for both of you, what are, what are some of the major faults of those who like are on the path to entrepreneurship or, or building something special and we can't we won't we can't even say that they gave up like that don't even count anymore because that's that's on you so we're talking about the people that are grinding it out but just not seeing that success that they thought they would what are what are some of those faults that if they would have changed this you know it completely changes the tra uh, the trajectory of their success Gotcha, gotcha. Let me let me hit that on the head. I got a perfect one right now, right. man. One one of the biggest faults that I see a lot of millennials run into is that they so focused on the the day to day wins. Like they want to win today. They want to win tomorrow. They want to win so immediately. And I, I, like LeBron James, he is like one of the, you know my idols, right? I love him, you know, for what he do from from basketball standpoint and just from an entrepreneur philanthropist standpoint, right? But when you watch LeBron, he's not focused on, you know, game one. You know, he's not focused on game two. He's focused on, well, he's, he's, not, he's focused on game one, game two, game three. He's not focused on the championship. When you start the beginning of the season, it's about what are you doing in this first quarter. All right, then let's see what we're going to do in the second quarter. All right, it's half time. How do we, you know, start strong in the third quarter? Like, you need to focus on the, the wins every single day. And a lot of millennials, once they get into real estate or get into entrepreneurship, they expect to get a bunch of money and a bunch of success within the first month or two. And in reality, most businesses fail within the first three to five years. So if you don't have that vision of just putting your head down and just focusing on what are you doing today to drive your business, then you're going to fail. So 
for me, as an example, you know, I work every, I work hard every single day on my business. I don't really focus on, you know, wins or how much money I'm going to make every single day. I just focus on what do I need to do to push my business forward. And at the end of the year, when you look back and you see you brought in, you know, $300,000 of revenue when you're about to do your taxes, and you're like, wow, like, this is how much I've done. But in the process, I'm not focused on it. So to, to sum up my point is, we need to be engaged and love the process. We need to enjoy enjoy the ride along the way and not be focused on the outcome. And I think that's something that a lot of millennials are, are battling with, you know, just focusing on outcome versus, you know, the process in between. Mm. Mm. Uh, I'm going to piggyback on that because <clears throat> I think he had a lot of great points. But I think something that, you know, we also want to keep in mind with this is that I feel like um, a lot of, millennials they come into this business like king said they're expecting they, they're only focusing on the wins and the money and and everything else and they don't see the darker side but more importantly i think what one of the biggest problems is that a lot of kings, kings excuse me a lot of kings and queens they're too emotional like they're too soft like you gotta understand this is grown man business Entrep successful entrepreneurship is equivalent to a professional basketball player, a professional football mm -hmm. player, a professional rapper. So, like, they get in this business and, you know what I mean, oh, you, you, you motivate it, so you do something, you get a little bit of results, and then when the motivation fade out and it's really grind time, we start being emotional, you know what I mean? Like, I want to use other words, but we start, like, like you got to keep the street, like me coming from the street, I understand, don't nobody care about me. You know, ain't nobody want to see me or my family win. So if I sit here and pout and complain because I've chosen to took a route to make it for myself and it's not working in that instant moment, and, and, you know, there's a bigger vision to this, you know, a lot of people are too emotional in this business. And I, and I say that because I get like that. And I tell myself, you know what, I, man, stop, stop complaining, man up, and keep going. It's not destined for you to win every day. You don't even know. You don't know what's going to happen on the other side of the curtain. So stop being so emotional. You know what you signed up for and keep on going. Like when you when you can talk to yourself in that manner, be your own big brother, you know, and that's when it's going to change. I have so many people reach out to me and they all pumped up. They find out about the business. They go get a deal or two. And, you know, I kind of see them doing anything or whatever. And then after a while, I start seeing they start reaching back out to me like from the beginning. And it's just like I'm like, yo, you already know what to do. You proof to yourself. Now it's time to man up and get out your feelings and be in this business for the long term. And that's what a lot of people don't get about the business. Pretty much sums up what Rob Mel says, but really giving it to you straight up like your brother from the street on the corner telling you that you need to change your life or you're going to be dead in jail in the next five years. Yeah, that's right. And you know, the, the, both points were like spot on. And the one thing uh, that you mentioned is like business is a sport. Right. And us as businessmen, although we might not be putting on an official jersey at the same time, like business is a sport and you have to perform. And the only way that you perform is being able to train your mind the same way that athletes train their mind. And it's weird because like it's it's there's nothing you will get. You will get no realer with yourself than finding out you know, what you spend your money on, <laughs> right? Like, sometimes you look at, you know, that statement, and you're like, eh, okay, this, you know, this money could have been spent better elsewhere, right? And it never ceases to amaze me how many people want to get to the next level, but then don't even hire a coach. Like, do, like, this, do we not understand that, you know, we'll take, you know, LeBron James, fine, probably the, the best, you know, basketball player uh, of our generation, we can debate that on a whole nother podcast. I'm not even going to go that route, but just bear with me. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? Like he gets coached. Like he, he still gets coached. You know what I mean? Like that is the consistent personal development that I feel like some people, especially in business, especially in business, like they don't go to the resources or as soon as they hear about a thousand dollar course, you know, they shut up. Like, I don't want to, you know, pay a thousand dollar right and it goes down to the, the the rich mentality versus the broke mentality and the broke mentality is what's it like what does it cost and then the rich mentality is like what's the value or what am i going to get returned right. so you go to the rich person like yo here's this course it costs twenty five hundred dollars 
And their immediate question is like, all right, how much am I gonna make off of it? And then that's how they that's how they make their decision. Whereas, you know, the broke people are like, how much does it cost? Oh, I don't, you know, I don't have that to spend. So it's like, don't worry. I mean, don't worry about the spend. Like, I mean, think of it like an ATM. If you put in 2500 and then 5000 comes out, like, you'll do that all day. But because you can't see that because of fear or your own self-limiting beliefs, because you can't see that, that then controls you not making that move. But like right. I said, as athletes, we have to actually train our mind on a daily on a daily basis. We have to train our mind to literally go through every self limiting belief and every fear on a daily basis. Like by the time it hits seven a.m., I done gone through so many emotions, and then you have to be able to fight all of that. But it's it's the same way that the athletes get butterflies right before they go onto the court, onto the field, onto the ice. Whatever the case to do that, you know, to, to perform uh, is the same way that we have to do it as 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 people in the sport of business. And uh, that's that I think is one of the most overlooked things. And I'm glad you, you pointed that out because it's definitely true. Right. And real yeah. quick, just to piggyback on that, uh, speaking about LeBron James, um, and I, I did a little video on this yesterday. Um, you know, if you watch LeBron, like you said, he, he's arguably one of the greatest NBA players, definitely in our time, definitely in our millennial time. If not, he's the best in our time. Now, in basketball, again, that's a whole other conversation we can have on another podcast. But to think about it, when you watch LeBron's Instagram, his IG story, remember, guys, keep in mind, he's the best player in our generation. He, he he's training in the off season. He's always in the gym. He's always getting to it. And to think about that, you know, he he's looking at the long term. Like Ramel was saying, he's not looking at um, he, he's again he's looking at the championships. That's the ultimate goal. He's focused on the day in day out with the mind of the long term jeopardy. You know, how am I going to surpass? I, I don't gotta be. I don't gotta win MVP this year. All I got to do is continue to build my stats and improve my body because I can always become more fit, better conditioned. I can make my jumper better. I can have my two-step dribble off the, off, off the dribble can be better. And LeBron James is always focusing on being better every single day. And that's one thing I love about him, being recognized as one of the greatest ever, all the adversity he deals with. Um, between social media, a lot of people, you get on social media and you, you see – you go ahead and you see somebody go get a little check, and now you down and out about your emotions because you not have the success of that other man where you've never even seen what that person or that woman has got went through to get there. So mm-hmm. I say all that really to just say that LeBron James is in this for the long run. He's birth the shit, and nothing else matters but him being the best man, husband, basketball player, son, I mean, father, son, that he could possibly be and just be the best law-abiding citizen. And that's what I see when I look at LeBron James, where it's bigger than basketball for him. He's in it to win that life. And when you when mm. you get so focused in this real estate business and you just focus on winning tech rather than just winning that life, then you then it's really hard to, to, to count your win. Like, for me, a win is a win isn't about getting a check. My win is going in there and perfecting my marketing. Like, I'm always two steps behind what makes the money because everyone's so focused on the money being a gratification for us. But I love the process. I love the getting up every single day, saying my morning grace, having a decent breakfast, juicing, you know, reaching out to my, my you know, my team members, my family, shooting Rob Mella call a couple times a week making sure he good. Those are my wins, being a great person at life and making sure that the people who are around me is okay. And when you live in a manner like that, with everything else you'll learn at the Young and Wealthy Tour, you will become a great man and woman at life. And when you go after that approach, that's that legacy that we'll be speaking about. You know, that's that, that's that Nipsey hustle that we'll be speaking on the tour. When you live in life in that manner, a day of no check ain't going to define your happiness or your success. Mm. You let money define you, that's when you'll be running the rat race, and that's why most entrepreneurs quit in their first three to five years of this business because they're chasing the wrong things, and they're in the business for the wrong reason. And real quick, and I said this in the beginning, I didn't get in real estate for real estate. I got in real estate for Jay's message for black people. So you guys, 
think about that before you jump into this business. It has to be bigger than the fact that you can make money in this business. So, you know, I'll leave you guys with that. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, yeah, no. yeah, agree. Go ahead, Ramel. Yeah, you, you, nah, I'm just gonna say, damn, you killed that, bro. Like, I felt chills when you killed that. <laughs> I resonate with that. Like, you, you take it home with that is it, it, the truth. Like, we, we out here grinding for something that's bigger than us. Like, when I go out every single day and I'm putting everything on the line to push my, my business forward, it's not about me because I, I, I really believe that. A lot of the things that I'm going to build in this lifetime, I probably won't even live to see. But what I'm really happy about is like when I do have kids or my nieces, my nephews, when they grow up, they're going to be able to reap the benefits of everything that I've built. So I know that I might not live to see everything that I'm doing, or but I know that you know generations to come, they're going to be able to survive. So that, that's really winning that life. And um, I definitely want to just leave one quote in regards to that. And the, and the quote is, you have to build a tree that you may not be able to sit under and get the shade. And, and when I say that, I mean, I say, you, you build a tree. A lot of people build that tree so that they can like sit up under it and be cool and get the shade. But when you grind it, you might, be, you might build that tree, but there might come a time where you, you, you won't go. And that tree will still be there for everybody else around you to go under that tree and get that shade. And like, that's real entrepreneurship. That's real trailblazing and being a real community leader. Yeah, they, that's awesome, man. They, they, we'll, we'll change the direction as we kind of start our descent. Um, right before the, the core four, which you, you've pretty much kind of already hit it uh, on the head on the on the longevity aspect of it. But, you know, you guys got the Young and Wealthy Tour coming up. But over the quarter, you know, it's the start of the third quarter. So for the remainder of the year, going into you know, say the beginning of next year, what's what's next for both of you? What are, what are y'all looking to 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 do? Um, every, like right now it's all about young and wealthy. Really, just bringing it home for this next half of the year and connecting, it, like Isaac said, just taking it to that to that next level of, um, you know, empowering our community, building our businesses and living everything we're talking about. And that's one of the biggest things. We have a lot of people that on social media talking about they doing this, they doing that, they, you know, businessmen. But we live in what we're talking about. And, you know, that's why we put together this tour so we can be out in the street where everybody that see us on Instagram and Facebook, they'll be able to touch us, fill us, pick our brain. Like, we're really out here and living what, we, what we're talking about. So, like, for me, like, that's this you know, younger wealthy in this, this next quarter for pretty much the remainder of the year. That's, that's a big thing. Yes, yes, exactly. So, for me, same thing about this younger wealthy tour, really, um, you know, really taking this to a next level, showing showing the world our growth, getting more people involved in this movement, everything in between that. Um, I'm kind of, you know, piggybacking and, you know, following my brother, Rob Mel's footsteps. He's a four you know, has four businesses. You know, me, I have one current business at the moment, um, my, my wholesaling business. But, you know, I will also be focused on this year bringing another business venture into my portfolio, into my legacy, where I'm starting a tax consulting company, um, Easy Tax Services, where we'll be providing, you know, our, um, we'll be co- providing our community with, um, you know, tax, tax um, preparations each year mm. for your income tax. So we'll also be kind of, branching off of our, you know, leveraging people, you know, everyone has to get their taxes done, but then still trying to coach and motivate people on what's the next move to do with your tax money. So I think that is still aligned with, okay, you know, everyone's expecting their taxes every year, but a lot of people don't have that game plan on how can they make this year's tax money, you know, get them to their next level. So I'll be bringing that service to the community. Um, definitely start of 2020. You guys, you know, will see it as, you know, on my social media, which we'll probably give our handles in a few. Um, but, yeah, that's what I'll be bringing, you know, another service to the community, um, you know. And just like you said, we, we got we to gotta have more, um, you know, black-owned. It got to be more black-owned out here. Um, so that's how it starts with us as being, you know, the trailblazers and leading by example and not just on social media screaming about it, but also out here making it available for people. So that's what I'm um, – going to be working on is starting up this tax business and, and this um and this uh the young and wealthy tour part two so um that that's what i'll be focusing on for the last two quarters of the year for sure man and you know like you said don't don't let social media 
uh, fool you, don't, you know, the follower count and everything like that. Like, I know people that, you know, got a bunch of followers that are doing nothing. Trust me, I'm, I'm kid. they're trying to do their pre-approvals for me. And you, you find out what, you know, what the real deal is. And then I got people with no followers that are doing more business than ever. And then vice versa. I got people that are, you know, have a bunch of followers that are doing exactly their thing. And I got people with no followers that still ain't doing nothing. So all in between. But don't let, you know, social media play a major influence. Um, find out who's getting their fingernails dirty, who's got their, their boots on the ground. You know, the people that are actually doing it teaching it, you know, from experience, not just, you know, regurgitating a book or anything like that. Um, find out who the real players are. And obviously, the people that I bring on my podcast, including my guests today, these are the people that are actually doing it. These are the people that are actually failing forward. These are the people that got more scars than you could imagine, you know, coming from battle, you know, who's going through more emotions than most people do at 7 a.m., you know what I'm saying, to build this business. So, yeah, just make sure that, that you know who the true players are. We'll, uh, we'll go right into the core four. Um, let's try to limit it to maybe about, uh, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds for the answer. Um but we'll jump right into it, and then y'all can just wrap it for I'll just ask the question, whoever goes first, and then whoever goes second, no problem. Um, first question, and I'll actually switch it up so that way uh, uh, people, I'll ask this question first. Where can people find you at? Let us know your social media platforms, everything like that. Where can people find you at? You guys can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is I-K-E underscore YMC. YMC stands for Young Minds Ken. Um, you can catch me on Facebook at Isaac Grace. It's I-S-S-A-C and Grace, like Amazing Grace. So that's that's my social media handles. Yeah, and you can catch me on Instagram, Mogul Lifestyle. That's M-O-G-U-L-L-I-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E underscore. You can catch me on Facebook, Ramel New Worlds. Um, last name N E W E R L S, and then you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Mogul Elite Club, M O G U L Elite Club. So that's where I'm at on on, on, on the internet. Awesome, man. Question number two: What is your favorite aspect about your individual fields, or if you in Ramel, if you want to like narrow down one business or whatever the case? But what, what's your favorite aspect about your individual fields? Um, my favorite aspect about my individual so I would say is my nonprofit. You know, like just really giving back and empowering other young kings and queens. That's the most fulfilling to me because at the end of the day, you know, money could come today, it could go tomorrow, you know, business could be booming today, but it could be, you know, down tomorrow. But what lives forever is how you impact the people. So me having a platform where I'm able to help build other individuals to reach their potential is the most you know, for me. And I think, I think for me, uh, my biggest aspect of getting into real estate business is really the, the, um, the notoriety and the legacy behind it. Like, you know, a lot of people in my area would say like, yo, you wanted the first one to do that, to take that route. So, you know, that's the biggest thing I like about it. The fact that now I am the go-to guy where everybody wants to talk to me because I'm just known as that one king that took that leap of faith and did something that nobody else in the community had to, you know, had the courage to even try. That's awesome, man. Question number three. If you had to pick one, your favorite business or personal development book? My favorite personal development book will be the is the 21 irrefutable laws by john c maxwell it teaches you the art the way to think as a leader and one of my biggest um attributes is leadership i think and as i i'm a natural born leader because when i really started reading this book a lot of the things was just i was just saying like damn like i naturally already do some of this stuff that he's speaking about so like the 21 irrefutable law um laws of leadership by john c maxwell is great self-development book there that I would recommend 
anybody who thinks they want to be a leader, a legacy builder, entrepreneur, you really want to get that business, that book. I'm going to add that to the uh, my Amazon cart. Yeah. There we go. In, in, my, in my, my book, I would say, is, um, it's called The Go-Giver. And it's by Bob Bird and John David, man. This, this book is really good because it, it talks about entrepreneurship, but it puts it in a way where you go out and give your all. You know, you got to find out how you have value. What value to buy when you can give out something to, to people that's so valuable, that's what you're returning in life. So uh, that, that really, when, when you put that lens on, it, it just puts you in a different mindset. So it's called The Go-Giver. I don't have that book. I did hear about that book though. I have um I have his other book, Endless Referrals. Um, and he's at you know he's he, to your point he's uh you know he's big on uh, providing value first. You know what I mean? And and growing and building and being able to prosper by giving first uh, rather than you know looking to receive or anything like that. Um, so yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, if it's anything like uh, Endless Referrals. Then um, I'm pretty sure it's an awesome book. And Bob, you know, Bob Burr's whole philosophy is about that. So um, I definitely see that being a good book. And last but not least, um, if y'all not, you know, when you're not out here building your business, expanding your teams, motivating, educating, uh, when you're not doing that, and obviously those things might be fun, absolutely. Uh, what are some of the other things that you guys do? Uh, in your spare time, I think I saw Isaac playing ball. I think recently on the gram, he was trying to do something. Was that correct? I I'm think a, that was that, me. Oh, that was right. <laughs> that's that's right. Me, yeah. I saw somebody. I saw somebody balling recently. Yeah. I was like, okay, that, that was that, that was me, definitely. So yeah, I, I outside of you know business, real estate, credit, and all that good stuff, I, I love ball. Like one of my first dreams was to go to the NBA. So every now and then, I try to relive those dreams and get on the court. <laughs> You know, just traveling, you know, hanging out with my family, my friends, you know, whether we hit the club, you know, hang out and just, you know, get out there and take flights and just explore and see different parts of the world. That's what I'll be on. And, and, and for me, um, outside of, you know, handling business and all that, you know, I like to just, you know, spend time with uh, my kids. I have two daughters. You know, one is one and one is, you know, five going on six. So I like to spend time with them. And outside of that, man, I like to go out and have a good time, you know. Like, I'm always preaching, you know, that hip-hop culture and financial literacy is cool, you know, with the right, you know, balance of it. So I still love to enjoy myself, and I, I don't I don't hide where I come from. You know, I come from going out, having a good time, enjoying myself. But, you know, there's a way that you go about things and do it, you know. You don't got to spend thousands of dollars and, you know, have the biggest VIP section to have a great time and I've learned that as I've matured so you know I like to go out and I spend time with my kids and you know family members and things like that that's awesome that's awesome fellas kings I appreciate you for taking the time uh once this goes live I mean I the the young and wealthy tour uh and I'll, I'll share a little uh a little funny story um and I don't you know it's it's pure uh, ignorance on my part, but it was real funny, right? So eventually, uh, I'll be 30 in August, and you know, every now and again, you know, you hear about these great people that are that are younger than you that are doing these amazing things, right? So you're like, all right, so the young and wealthy tour. So I'm like, man, I'm not yet, like, I ain't young no, like, I'm about to be 30. Like, what they gonna teach me? You know, like, what they gonna teach me? Like these young whippersnappers, like, what they talking about, right? But uh, one of the things that I've just learned just over the years was just that, like, that age, that age shit gets thrown smooth out the window. And, like, uh, you're just able to build with whoever's just got the right mind for business. And, um, you know, it was just a thought, but obviously I want to stay coming with no problem. But it was just funny because I'm like, well... If that was the case, then nobody would do business with me when I first started in the business. You know what I mean? And I was doing business with everybody that was older than me. Because, you know, at that point, and nobody my age was buying homes or selling homes like that. So I had to really rely. Now, obviously, a lot more of my network that's my age is starting to come as clients. But in the beginning, I had to tap into a whole, like, older network or, or it wasn't going to get done. So, you know, and obviously, they chose to do business with me. 
So I think it's awesome, especially at the age that you two currently are, um, especially as black men in this particular economy, in this world, in this society, uh, when you're putting your best foot forward, when you're growing businesses, when you guys are changing what people are thinking is possible, um, you know, it's 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 now on a moral duty. You know what I mean? Like et like ethnically, you you have a moral duty to promote that in the best limelight in order for our entire but you know generation, but just race in general. Um, because we need to see that more often in order to be able to change all of this, you know, psychological damage that has been done. And you two are doing an excellent job at that. So we obviously thank you. Keep the grind going for sure because you guys are doing it. No questions asked. And it's scary because I'm not even, I mean, like I said, like I'm out here 30, done some amazing things, right? And it still got so much more to do. And I'm just like, man, like if I... It's always a thought, Buzz. I, if I had knew what I know now at 25, or if I was doing this, what I'm doing now at 25, man, I'd be... But at the end of the day, um, it's the day in and day out grind to get to that next level. So we out here doing it, which is awesome. Definitely, definitely appreciate that. So yeah, um, King Austin, like always, you know, you brought me on your podcast originally. You told me, you know, who would I recommend? I, re I recommended Ramel to come on. He had our solo um, solo episodes. Now we did a joint one. Like you said, this is history in the making, first first ever. And this is what I want to hear more of. I want to be a part of that first ever in all aspects of life. You know, I'm trying to do new things and, 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 and help other kings and queens break barriers in their businesses, in their shows, and, you know, in their radio hosting as well. So we want to just personally thank you for, you know, even supporting us enough to you know, have us on here to talk about our tour to try to get this message out here because it's really hard to get people to follow these type of movements, you know, and that's the capacity, capacity we would like to. But, you know, we're thankful for people like you who are willing to be selfless enough to give us an opportunity to come on your platform to share your viewers with our light and our perspective. So, again, you know, we thank you for that. I'm sure a lot of viewers will hear this and, you know, any viewers that's listening to this, when you come meet us out on our Young and Wealthy tour, make sure you let us know that you came from Austin's podcast and you heard us on there just so that we can always remember where the love and support is coming back from. That's love, man. Yeah, the, uh, mm -hmm. go ahead, Ramel. Nah, I'm just saying, the same thing with Isaac, man. He took it home and not much more, more for me to say, but I appreciate you, you know, Barry, for, you know, allowing us to be on this platform. No, nah, that's love. That's love. The um, you know, the podcast is growing like crazy, which is amazing. The download, like the per episode downloads, are going up. I got people that are DMing me, like, you know, yo, I'm down in Florida. Like the podcast is the like an inspiration. I'm out here doing this. I'm out here doing that. I had one dude uh, recently that was from New York listening to the podcast, and next thing you know, he goes and closes on a multifamily out in Jersey City. You know, like he's getting that project started. So like. You know, it's, it's moving, and this is my, my platform to be able to, you know, with that go-giver mentality, to be able to give back, put that out there, because uh, I know what mindset, my, I know what my mindset was before I got into real estate, and then, or just in business in general, and then uh, me getting into business, and it's like, whoa, okay, there are a lot of people that are doing their thing out here, like, this is crazy, hold up. So then as you start to do your thing, you're like, oh, I gotta tell other people about this, because this life is amazing, like, I get to do whatever I want, I get to build, you know what I'm saying, like, I get to put deals together, I get to help people, I get to, you know, network with people that, like, you know, I actually can build the relationship off of and like experience equals happiness. So the more experience uh, that you have, you know what I mean? And it's awesome because, you know, now I've got uh, my wife is into it and now we're able to, to build this business, you know, together, which is like, you know, it's it's extremely rare to find. So, yeah, man, I think you yeah, too for coming on. Uh, the the love is always appreciated. I'm glad that y'all was able to take the time to come on, provide the value. Um, we're going to be promoting the Young and Wealthy Tour 100%, and let's get to it. We got more work to do. Yes, sir. Thank you, King. I appreciate it. Appreciate y'all, man. Okay.
we we'll be right, in touch, guys, and then um, I'll wind up, I'll wind up seeing y'all when y'all come to North. That's up.